Hey guys, and welcome back to Action Script 3 Game Design. Sorry it's been a couple of days since I uh, uploaded the last tutorial. Things have just been absolutely crazy with uh, oh, flaky girls, raiding, chicken parmigianos, marking work, going to uni, coming back, you know, the list goes on. Anyway, uh, we're back, and let's get going with the next part of the tutorial. So where we left off last time was we got our enemies to have a bit of randomness in them. So I'm going to test this movie, and you can see they spawn at random altitudes, they got random speeds, they pick a random enemy color, and they got random direction. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a game timer. So what a timer object does in Action Script 3 is that we set it up to run at a particular interval, and when it ticks on that interval, say every one second, it's going to run a function. And in that function, we're going to tell our game to spawn a new enemy. And we've already got our code set up for the enemies, which set them up on screen, you know, position them, set up their random altitudes and all that good stuff. So yeah, let's get started with that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all my enemies on screen, because we won't be needing these anymore. And I'm going to go back to my first game, Action Script 3 document. So a handy thing, which I don't think I've explained yet in Flash Developers, because we're usually sitting on this project panel, if you go along to the Outline tab, down the bottom here, you get to see everything that's in your class. So the little blue square objects up here, these are what you call your class members. And these objects, or variables, they can be accessed in any of your functions in your class. So it's a good little way of remembering if your object or your variable is a class member or not. Have a look if it's got a little blue square next to it. And if it's a public one, it won't have this little padlock on it like MC player. Okay, so let's set up a timer. At the end of our first game function, I'm just going to set up a new function, which is going to create our timer. Uh, actually, let's not set up a new function. We'll just put it in here. So I'm going to set up a timer object. So the timer object needs three things. First thing is we need to create a timer object. Next thing we need to do is add an event listener to it to listen for when the timer ticks. And you can also call those intervals. And lastly we need to start our timer object. So let's fill in the code for this. So to create a timer object, pretty much stock standard. I'm gonna start off with a variable. It's gonna be a T for timer object. And let's call this enemy timer. Now it's gonna be data type to a timer object, which is in Flash Utilities. So we'll create a new timer object and now we need to listen for the timer ticks or intervals so we're going to add an event listener to our timer object so our t enemy timer let's add an event listener and we're going to listen for the timer event timer and when our timer ticks we're going to go to a function which we're going to call add enemy Okay, and finally we want to start our timer object. So T enemy timer start. Okay, so let's create this add enemy function. I'm going to control shift one in Flash Develop, create the event handler. So for the moment, let, just to see if it's working, I'm going to put a trace event in here. And I'm just going to put timer ticks. So every ooh, we haven't set that up yet. So our enemy timer, when we create a new timer, it's expecting two variables in here. So if you hold down Control Shift and press Spacebar and Flash Develop, it'll bring up this little helpful hint. So the timer object needs two variables. It needs a delay. So how often do you want the timer to tick? I'm going to start off with one second, which is going to be a thousand milliseconds, and the repeat count. Now, if you don't specify a repeat count, the repeat count equals zero, which means loop forever. So if you want your timer to only run a certain number of times, you can specify it by putting it in here. 
But for our example, we're not going to bother because we want it to repeat forever. So now, every one second, so 1000 milliseconds at the time it ticks, it's going to run this function and we should get tracing time it ticks out in our output display. So I'm going to test this and wait for it. Here we go. Time it ticks, time it ticks, time it ticks. So that's working away. So now in this function, instead of tracing something, I'm going to get rid of that, let's add an enemy into our game. So just like we did for our missile, we need to do two things here. We need to create a new enemy object and we need to add that enemy object to the stage. So let's create a new variable for our new enemy, which is going to be an MC enemy class. And we're going to have a new MC enemy created in memory. Now once we've got it on memory, we've got to stick it on our stage. So I'm going to go stage, add child, and we're going to add our new enemy to the stage. So let's give this a shot and see our enemy spawning. So every one second we're creating a new enemy. So not too bad. Our game's slowly coming along. But we've got a similar problem that we had with the lasers or our missiles. And that is when we create an enemy object, it's going to keep going across the stage. And even though it's off the screen, it's still sitting there in memory. So let's find a way of optimizing this. So just like we did for our missiles, we're going to have to add these enemies to an array. So I'm going to add a comment for this. Add our new enemy to our enemy array collection. And let's set up that array as well while we're at it. So we've got a missile array. So up the top of my constructor function, I'm going to set up a new private variable for an array enemy array. And you can see it gets added here in our outline window. Very handy. So back down to add enemy. Let's say a enemy array and let's push in our new enemy. So that gets added and we have a way of tracking how many enemies are on screen. So just to prove that the game is not optimized at the moment, let's trace out how many enemies we have in our array every time we add one to it. So I'm going to do a trace a enemy array dot length. And let's test this. So, ooh, got a bit of a problem. Okay, probably type something wrong here. And yep, there's nothing wrong with this code. We just haven't initialized our enemy array. So remember when you create a class member object and it's an array, you have to initialize it somewhere. So let's initialize our enemy array to equal a new array here. And let's test that again. So there we go. One enemy, two, three, four. And even though they're off screen, they're still going to be stacking up. So just like our missiles, Flash is going to get overloaded at some point in time and blow up. So let's fix that real quick. So what I'm going to do is go back over to my document class for the first game. And what we need to do here is test when our enemy goes off screen and let's you know destroy our enemy. So just like we did for check missiles off screen, I'm going to make another function in my game loop. We're just going to check enemies off screen. So let's create that. And just like we did once again for our missiles off screen, I'm going to loop through all my enemies, get my current enemy, and then I'm going to check if it's either off the left or the right, and then we'll do, have to do a little bit more of a check for the left or right. But let's get started with loop through all our enemies. So I'm going to create a for loop for that. Start off a counter with i. 
and we'll data type that to an integer and make it equal zero. So as long as i is less than our a enemy array dot length, we can add one to i. Okay, so now let's get our current enemy in the loop. So we create a current enemy variable. Just going to be an MC enemy type, and we're going to be grabbing this from our enemy array and whatever position I is up to. Now what we need to do is we need to check if we need to check what direction our enemy is traveling in and if it's off the respective side of the stage. So let's try this with the left side. So just say I have an enemy on screen. Now it starts off on the right. So that means its direction, its S direction, is going to be L. So what I need to do is test if our enemy's S direction is L and if it's less than say 0 minus half of our enemy's width. So this would be completed its journey over the left side of the stage. So let's check first in our MC enemy. Our S direction at the moment is a private variable and you know I don't really want to get into whole getters and setters at the moment because we're trying to keep this thing simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change this from a private variable for S direction to a public variable. So now we can get access to that variable in our enemy object. I'm going to save that and go back to my first game. So we'll do one side first. Our enemy starts on the right. Sorry, when enemy starts on the right, we're going to check if our current enemy's S direction is left, so it's moving left on the stage, and our current enemy's x position is less than, so 0 minus half of the enemy's width. So I can just put negative current enemy's width divided by 2, and close off the if statement. So in here, we can now get rid of our enemy because we know it's off the stage and it's completed its travel. So remove enemy from our array first and then remove our enemy from the stage. So from our array, we're going to say a enemy array and let's splice out what position our enemy is and finally let's say current enemy and we'll destroy oh we haven't set up the destroy function yet damn okay well we'll have to set that up in the next tutorial so let's just get rid of our enemy from the array and let's not test our movie yet so the next tutorial is going to come up straight away run out of YouTube time unfortunately, they still haven't given me my more than 15 minutes yet, I don't know why, I think I'm doing a good thing, maybe put in a good word for me, yeah? So anyway, in the next tutorial we'll get rid of our enemies properly and we'll set up that destroy function. So, cheers.